Hey everyone, this is Cheska, your friendly training specialist and tech coach. In this tutorial, we are going over Magic School AI and diving into the Science Classroom to craft some engaging vocabulary practice. Now, before we begin, I just want to start with a quick disclaimer. Please make sure to check in with your school district and ask about its DPAs or data privacy agreements and security guidelines regarding Magic School and other AI tools. Once you have the green light, let's go ahead and dive in. So head on over to Magic School and type in um, magicschool.ai in your browser. And this should be the front facing web page for you. I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my single sign on. And here is the vocabulary list generator. Now it's brought me right through that because this was the thing that I was using last. But let's just go ahead and click on magic tools on the left side panel. And here we can see everything. If you haven't used magic school AI before of your or you've limited you have limited exposure to it or haven't really played around with it yet um it can be quite overwhelming you know especially with the dashboard and it's showing you everything at once they have over 60 plus um tools and it does take some time to kind of go through all of them right so uh if you see that the ones with the yellow stars these are actually my favorite tools and anything that you favorite or bookmark, go straight up here to your favorite section so that it's quicker um, for you to access. So the tool in question is the vocab list generator. So we're going to head on over to our search bar and just start typing in vocabulary. And since I've already bookmarked it, it's going to be right under my favorite list. Okay. If you do not want to use the search bar or want to see another way of finding it, you can also just go to content and scroll down under all tools. And then here it is, vocabulary list generator. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and double click on that. And here is the generator again. So anytime you're using these tools and you're not quite sure how to use it, you can also click on the exemplar button up top. So clicking on it, it will give you some ideas on how to fill it out. Okay. And then it kind of gives you an example of what it looks like once it's done. So I don't really want to do <clears throat> cellular respiration yet. I do want to use something else. So let's go back and clear inputs. Okay, so under grade level, I am going to stick with eighth grade um, for my level, only because eighth grade is one of the grades that will be taking the CBT or the science computer based test this spring. Under vocabulary words to define, you have the option to go from five or more words. Uh, the maximum is 15, and I'll just kind of keep it kind of shorter, shorter, sort of short, 10 with 10. Okay, now under the field box for topic or text, you have some options here. You can type out just a topic like mitosis or forces of motion. If you have your specific list, you can copy and paste all of your vocab words here. Or uh, you could just copy and paste in a standard. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and copy weather and climate, which is one of the intermediate level investigations and i'll paste it back here and let's go ahead and press generate so we prompted reina to generate 10 vocabulary lists for weather and climate and here it is we could stop right here we can go ahead and export it to google docs or microsoft word but really we're not using the full potential here so let's go ahead and do the next stage let's do some customizing let's do some differentiation here and we can do that by heading on down to the bottom part of our screen so the nice thing about magic school is any tool is also incorporated with reina it's chatbot so you can add more prompts down here and get reina to do more of the work so reina is actually your personalized teaching assistant here 
So when you press on the blue action button, you've got some presets. You've got translate, where you can translate the whole vocab list into another language. You can generate some questions, whether they're multiple choice or free response. You can shorten or lengthen the text. You can have it summarized as a sentence, a paragraph, or just the main key bullet points. Or we can use some custom prompts. Now up here, they actually give you some presets as well from differentiate all the way down to resources. Anything below that are my own prompts. And you can add your own custom prompts by scrolling all the way down and clicking on plus add custom prompt. So any prompts that you see here that you think you like and want to use, feel free to use, um, to use them. Okay. All right. So let's say that we need to differentiate this um, for students. You know, some of these definitions is a little clunky, right? Like, look at this tornado one here. That that's a bit um, much. So let's go ahead and and make it a little simpler. So I'm actually going to go and just go to the preset length, and I'm going to ask Reina to shorten some of these definitions. Okay. And here she says, okay, I've shortened it to 50% while maintaining your tone and meaning. Okay, so I'm looking at my tornado guy, tornado definition again. Where is it? Here you go. Um, <clears throat> here we go. And it is a lot shorter, but I, th I think we could do better. So let's go back to our actions. And this time I'm going to use my own custom prop. Because if you go to differentiate, it's just going to give you a sentence starter. So for the output above, give me suggestions to differentiate it for X, Y, C. So I actually just wanted to do a whole prompt. So what I did is I made one for simpler language. So my prompt says, can you generate the content using simpler language and shorter sentences? Let's generate that. Okay, and I think this is much better because just look at our tornado definition. A powerful spinning column of air that touches the ground and a big cloud. So I think that's a lot better. It's a lot easier for my students to get. And let's see if I could keep working on it. So let's do custom and, <clears throat> excuse me, let's do maybe differentiated lists. Okay, so now that I've taken my vocabulary list and I've kind of simplified the, the text speak or the academic speaks to something that's a lot easier for my students to understand, now I wanted to generate three versions. Okay, so my custom prompt, I actually have it written out as, can you create multiple versions of all of the output above for different learning styles? One with simpler definitions and census examples for struggling learners and another with more challenging definitions for advanced learners. And I'm just going to fix my typo here. Okay, so let's see what Reina does. Okay, this is very nice. So now you can see it's a little longer because she separated it out. She actually has the set for struggling learners above. And let's find our tornado example here. All right, so a tornado is a very powerful spinning wind column that touches the ground and comes from a big dark cloud. It's like a twisting funnel of air that can be really destructive. Love it. Gave it a sentence example as well. Then let's scroll on down to our advanced learner set. And let's take a look at the tornado definition again. Oops. Nice. So now I have two sets here. I've got one for my struggling learners, and I've got one for my um, advanced learners. Now we could stop here. If that's what we're, we want, we could go and export this and send this Google Doc to the rest of our lesson plans, right? Now, 
I actually wanted to take it a few step <laughs> uh, further, right? Of course, of course, come on guys, uh, it's your tech coach, right? So I actually want to make it a lot easier for me. I don't want to have to go through and like copy and paste and then have to separate it. So um, Reyna is actually really good at multitasking, but it's not so great at creating separate sets. So you actually have to tell her specifically to do that. So for example, up here, when I put all of the output above, that's key when you're prompt engineering for Reyna because um, before I did this, she only did two or three of the vocabulary words out of the 10 that she generated. So if you want her to do better work, you got to actually <laughs> write better prompts, right? Better input uh, equals better output. So it's all about the human touch here. So I actually have to be specific about what I want her to do. So what I really want her to do is to create two separate sets, right? I want her to create one for struggling learners and advanced learners. So I'm gonna just say, um, actually I have a custom prompt that I already did. So let's see if I could do that. All right. Okay, here you go. So <clears throat> can you create a list of all of the output above with simple definitions and sentence examples for struggling learners? So now I just want her to give me just for one step. Great. So now I could just go and go back here and say export to Google Docs and this would be weather and climate vocab set A. And then you can go, can you do the same above, oops, above for my intermediate, um, level learners and i can say that because we're in the same thread or meaning we're still in the same chat thread or connected chats so once i'm still in the thread i could just say hey do the same or can you do that because she's still keeping tabs of what i'm asking her to do so can you do the same above for my intermediate level learners so now I have a second set of vocab words, and then I could go back up here and export Google Docs weather and climate set B. And then finally, do the same for my advanced learners. Learners. Okay, great. Here we go. So she just went through and did everything. We have one vocabulary set with simplified um, language. And now we also have three vocab sets, one for our str struggling learners, our intermediate level learners, and our advanced learners. And then we can go export it, go to Google Docs, weather and climate, set C. So we could stop right there. We now have a vocabulary set for all three groups of our diverse learners. But let's go and create some more material for them to practice with, right? So let's go back to actions. And you can use the preset. You can do the questions. And you can have um, Raina do multiple choice, right? So here she's writing five multiple choice questions based on the, uh, the vocabulary set we just created. All right, but that's not what we want. We want to have um, customized sets for our learners. So we could say, and I already did a custom prompt for this, so you feel free to use it as well if you'd like it. I could do, let's, oh, where's my question? Here you go, differentiated questions. Okay, now remember what I said about Reyna, um, is she's not really good at multitasking. And I'm just gonna generate this just to show you, right? Okay, so I ask her, hey, can you provide different levels of questions for all three sets of learners related to the content? If I generate that, <clears throat> here's what we'll see. Okay, so she did exactly what I asked her to do. She did basic level, uh, she did another one for intermediate level, and then another set for advanced level. But notice that she only gave me two questions 
per level. And we want to work smarter, not harder here. We want to have complete sets that we could send out to the printer in like five minutes or put up or push out to our Google Classroom. So we actually have to fine tune our prompt here. So I'm gonna use that same prompt and I'm gonna show you how to kind of change that out a bit. Okay, so using the same custom prompt, I could say, can you, pr can you create, create 20 multiple choice questions? for basic level okay and because i don't want to have to go back and look up the answers the correct answers make sure you tell reyna to add an answer key as well <clears throat> all right here we go so now she's writing out 20 multiple choice questions and she's included the answers as well. Now, what I'm looking at here is I actually don't like how she did that. She added the answer right underneath each, each question. So I don't, I don't like that because what if I'm copying and pasting and then forgetting that the answer's there? So I will ask her, can you redo that? But create a separate answer key see if she let's see how she does with that okay good so now we have our questions 1 through 20 with just the questions and multiple choice questions and then let's see if she actually listens <laughs> and creates a different key yay there it is perfect so it's actually how i want it so then i want her to generate the same for do the same for uh intermediate level all right so while she's generating for intermediate level i could go back here save this resource and then just uh rename it uh, i don't know uh b basic level uh, practice questions and then i'll go down here for intermediate level export it and save it as uh, intermediate level uh, practice questions and then let's do the same thing for do the same for intermediate uh, no advanced advanced learners okay oh no I actually just went up here and what did I see here? Okay, do the same for intermediate level. So she's done the same thing with original. So I have to actually go back and prompt her. And you know what? I can't be mad at her, right? Because it's it's my prompting. So I gotta just make sure that I go back and do that. So go back and reformat the intermediate level questions so that it has a separate answer key. And this is really the process when you're using ChatGPT, BARD, Magic School. Uh, it's an it's a repetitive process. You have to go back and forth with the chatbot to really get it to do what you really needed to do so it's a matter of clear communication right so here we have it she did exactly what i want her to do now and now i can say do the same thing for the level advanced level content okay So now we've got our vocab set with simplified language. And now we have three sets of differentiated multiple choice question and corresponding answer keys. And then we are probably set to go. Now, what I could even do here, because sometimes I have those students where my 
high achieving students and they want to do more practice questions and they want to know why they got certain questions wrong and you don't often have time to sit down with them and explain to them why right so maybe you want to also provide them that extra touch so we could say can you add answer explanations to the advanced level content All right, so this is nice. So maybe you're using a branching Google Forms um, homework assessment, or you're using practice sets in Google Classroom, and you want your um, advanced learners to be more independent. So maybe you're doing some type of uh, stations or group work, and you're reviewing with your students um, with a small group of students and you want those who pass the mastery check to do some practice questions for the CBTs. So you could use this last option and you can create some type of practice set or Google form or, or review assessment with them and then give them the actual answer explanations. So here, let me see, let me just go to number one. Here's the question, here's the answer. And then it goes ahead and, and explains you why. So lots of different things here. So we can even like take this to Edpuzzle. And I love how Edpuzzle, you could add a video in that and they could watch it. And then you could give them these questions. And then Edpuzzle actually has a, um, uh, a box there where you can give them an answer explanation when they got their answers wrong so they can go back and review. So just some really nice ways to use Magic School and um, maximize its potential, not just creating a list, but really using um, Magic School vocab list generator and its custom prompts and Reina chatbot to really take it further and um, differentiate your lists so that it really gives that personalized touch for your um, three different sets of learners. Okay, so I hope that was really helpful for you. Like I said, if you liked any of my custom prompts, feel free to take and use them. Um, and when Magic School, actually, they are coming out with another export. So here in export, one of the new export options they're rolling out soon is the ability to take this and send it straight to Kahoot. So hopefully when they officially take uh, run that out, I could show you another video tutorial so we could take everything that we just made here in this video and send it automatically to Kahoot or Quizzes or to Edpuzzle and then do a game-based review with your students. All right, so happy prompting, happy vocab list generating, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.